Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the different bus settings in Logic, and they are the post pan, post fader, and pre fader options. Now these all do slightly different things and work better for some things than others, so I'll just be walking through how to do that. Now to actually understand how these work, we need to understand how the actual signal flow works itself. So the order of our signal to achieve the end result that we get. So it always starts with the input, so in this case massive, or it could just be a bit of audio, then audio effects, then fader, panning, and then stereo out. So as it stands, the default that Logic loads up is post pan. This means that this bus or this aux is going to come in right at the end of our signal chain just before it goes to the stereo output. That means that all the changes that we make here are going to affect this, because any of the effects we make before something will affect the end result. So it's like if on our channel strip we have a distortion plug in here and then a reverb underneath it. We're going to distort the original signal and then the reverb will be reverberating the distorted signal. However, if we swap those around, we're going to be reverberating the original signal and then distorting that reverb. So the order of it does really make a difference. So by having it here, both the panning and the fader are going to affect the overall level and position of our reverb. So if I just press play, if I pan it, the reverb's going over to the right as well. So we can see here as well, we can just see that's getting louder on the right. And sometimes we don't always want that. So if I've got anything that's panned, I'll use the post fader, because then it won't change the actual position of the reverb. The reverb will always stay central. And this can be really good because it makes the actual stereo image and the stereo field sound a bit more natural and can really glue everything together very nicely. So now if I press play, reverb staying central. Again, as we can see here, the signal is just staying in the middle. It's a little heavy on the right, but that's because of the synth itself. So if you've got any pan sounds, then using the post fader is probably the best option really, because as I said, it'll keep all that reverb central. There are a couple of exceptions for this, and that is like if you've got any doubled up sounds, so any like hard panned guitars, like hard left or hard right, if you keep both the reverbs on low central, it could get very muddy and very dense very quickly. Or if you've just got a central sound anyway, you don't, you don't really need to do that. You can just use post pan for that because you're not panning the original sound anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then lastly, we've got pre-fader. And this is really, really useful for getting a good dry, wet balance between the two. So if we change the fader here, it's not going to affect the reverb that we've got on our bus. So I can turn that all the way down and we still get our reverb coming through. Of course, you can still adjust it using the send here. But this can be a really, really useful tool. This can be great for if you're trying to make like an eerie kind of sound on like a piano or even some vocals. You can essentially just get the wet reverb coming through and then maybe start to automate in the original dry signal with it. And there are lots of possibilities for that. Understanding how to use these is actually quite a basic but effective tool that you can use to improve the stereo image of your track. As I said, Using the post fader on pan sounds has really helped me just kind of glue everything together when I didn't even really realize what was going on in the first place. It's quite a subtle change, but when you've made that change, there's a clear result afterwards. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.